Hey, grace and peace, everybody. I just wanted to do this on um, short video. Y'all know I'm involved in apologetics and stuff. And on Facebook, someone, you know, there's ongoing conversations in, on different platforms I'm involved with. And somebody brought up Dr. Ben on the African origins of Christianity. And he was lecturing. This had to be at least, I don't know, at least a 30-year-old video, 25-year-old video, something like that. But um, I want to bring up some. I want to bring up some things when we start dealing with Dr. Ben and John Henry Clark, World 16 Crucified Saviors, Gerald Massey, and a whole bunch of these other supposedly conscious people and the conscious master teachers. They, they, they're slick, and you have to be careful. We're living in a time where they call, like, if you start, if you're a, if you're a believer, you understand Mount Carmel and Elijah with the prophets of Jezebel. We're coming to that time. And we're living in that time where the priest of Osiris, this is Sarah Sutton Seti, Ashwa Kwesi, Ray Hagen, Dr. Ben, everybody that's pushing this, um, this comedic doctrine or this Egyptian doctrine. First of all, everybody on the entire continent of Africa didn't worship Osiris, but they'll give you that impression that everybody on the continent of Africa worshipped Osiris. Egypt was one of the greatest civilizations, so John Henry Clark and Dr. Ben and others felt that as people of African descent, that they, everyone has to go back to Kemet to lock into their true selves and their true spirituality and their true history. But there's something I want to bring out about these guys. They're liars and they're slick deceivers. They will deceive you. I don't know if it's knowingly or unknowingly because you have two types of deceivers. You have people like my man Dr. Aaron would say in the conscious community that they're echo chambers. They would just say something they heard from somebody else and they would just say somebody else would say it and somebody else would say it and on and on and on. But why I say they're deceivers is because Dr. Ben will tell you John Henry Clark will tell you John G. Jackson Christianity before Christ Excuse me, they'll attempt to tell you that um, Horus or Osiris, you know, sometimes different people get the stories mixed up, um, that he was crucified when in all actuality crucifixion didn't exist. If we trace crucifixion back, crucifixion, we can trace it back to the Persians. And then the Romans took it to a higher level and they practiced it more. They practiced it more than anybody else coming out of the ancient world. World. But when you deal with people like him, even Acharya S. and Jordan Maxwell, these slick devils, they'll try to use words like crucifixion and baptism and virgin birth, and they'll use biblical terms that weren't actually around in those days. The Romans knew nothing, oh, not the Romans, excuse me, the Egyptians knew nothing about crucifixion. They weren't looking for a promised coming Messiah, so they'll take biblical narratives out of its context they'll say Osiris had 12 disciples then they were um and they were they, they followed him and he was baptized baptism baptism we can't find that in the Egyptian narrative so they're making biblical things they're making biblical statements and they're putting it on the com comedic doctrine to try to draw some type of similarities Osiris or Horus neither one of them had 12 disciples they're trying to force the Jesus story and it's not right and exact historically speaking it's not right and exact this is why I often ask myself ask yourself the question how many times have y'all seen video with Dr. Ben in the room with other PhDs Egyptologists this is a question when he got into the room and he was le lecturing, y'all know the story with Mary Lefkowitz, her PhD, she has a PhD in classics. So when she got in the room and Dr. Ben started making statements about Aristotle and the temple and, and, the, um, and the library of Alexandria, this is her lane and she's a PhD. So when there was questions and answer time, she raised her hand and she said, what year? When was the library destroyed? When was it? She asked him questions that he couldn't answer. A lot of these people, they can tell y'all something, but they need to write in journals where other PhDs on their same level in the same field can answer them. And then we can un begin to understand scholarship, but there's a big difference between what we talk about on the internet and the barbershop and what scholars talk about. 
Y'all cannot get those two things twisted. What else I hear in the conscious community? Oh, we are the bodies of everybody that died in the Bible. That proves the Bible is not true to a lot of conscious people. Now that sounds crazy because just because they have the bodies of certain pharaohs because of the resurrection with the bar and the car and the mummification, right, of the Egyptians, they had certain kings. <coughs> Excuse me. Not regular people in Egypt, but we're the bodies of Aristotle. Where's the body of Herodotus? Where's the body of Homer, Julius Africanus, Pocahontas? 99% of the bodies on the planet, you can't find them because of the science, y'all, of decomposition. This is just known facts. So you would never hear somebody like Richard Carrier or Stephen or Stephen or, or Richard Dawkins or anybody that's in the atheist anybody that's in the new atheistic community, you won't hear them making certain statements such as where are the bodies because they understand decomposition. No scholarship and what's a scholarly debate or a scholarly question or argument and just what's a barbershop talk. There's a big difference. You've been watching Berean TV. Thanks for watching.